In early May, gas prices, which were already rising due to lifted pandemic restrictions, shot up. And it had a lot to do with this. The biggest fuel pipeline system in the United States. Forced to shut down. A suspected cyber attack. A cyber extortion attempt. On May 7th, the nation's largest fuel pipeline, Colonial, shut down for six days in response to a ransomware attack that targeted the company's networks. We have efforts underway with the FBI and DOJ, Department of Justice, to disrupt and, and uh, prosecute ransomware criminals. The attack drove panic consumers to stockpile fuel in states heavily impacted by the shutdown, like North and South Carolina, Georgia, and Virginia. This caused long lines and shortages at gas stations. The Colonial Pipeline cyber attack was the latest high-profile event to expose a threat to aging vulnerable energy infrastructure in the U.S. So just how vulnerable are we to future attacks? Our energy infrastructure is under attack and has been under attack for uh, at least two decades now, so both from a physical perspective, but also digital. Teresa Payton is a cybersecurity expert and former White House chief information officer under the Bush administration. She says that the energy infrastructure that fuels the U.S. is highly vulnerable to attacks like this. The country has around two and a half million miles of fuel pipelines. And Colonial is a major part of this network, stretching from Texas to New Jersey. Each pipeline includes hundreds of thousands of devices, sensors for readings, valves that help control flow and pressure, and leak detection systems. Security experts say that all are at risk in an attack. While most equipment isn't directly connected to the internet, the concern is that hackers can penetrate digitized tools or computer networks, working their way into broader systems. Cyber criminals will often infiltrate systems through remote platform hacking, email phishing schemes, or through compromised employee credentials. Once they penetrate IT, they study the traffic of the accounts on the network, and they learn how to hide in plain sight. I liken it to uh, somebody who may be uh, using rush hour traffic to basically hide their car among hundreds and thousands of vehicles in rush hour. It's hard to pick out the bad actor when they're just kind of going with the flow of the traffic. Once hackers are inside, they can use malicious code to lock up systems or steal sensitive information to extort their victims. And these type of cyber attacks can have far reaching effects. You have seen after hurricanes where that has taken part of our uh, energy infrastructure offline and sort of what the downstream impacts are for weeks and months afterwards. And so a cyber incident can have the same or even more devastating effects on our energy ecosystem. So why are the nation's most critical energy systems so exposed to cybercrime? Peyton says that as older systems are updated and digitized, they've become more complex, which hackers have taken advantage of. We're integrating 5G technology, smart grid technology, uh, sort of alternative and renewable, sustainable energy sources. And each time you layer on these new technologies, these new technologies are unproven as far as how they will stand up to a cyber attack. In the US, there's also high demand for energy to always be on and working, which makes it difficult for systems to be updated. Replacing outdated systems is also expensive and time-consuming. But it's not just aging infrastructure and a lack of resources that expose energy systems to cyber attacks. Experts say that hackers are becoming increasingly organized within the ransomware industry. They'll use a combination of burner phones, dark web forums, uh, using handles in Reddit, using code words uh, when they're trying to recruit people. And with uh, more and more Silicon Valley companies rolling out encryption built in as part of messaging platforms, it makes it simpler for them to just use commercially available tools. After a successful attack, cyber criminals can demand payment in cryptocurrency, which limits the ability of law enforcement to track them. There's also been a growth in insurance policies that cover ransomware payments, which could help boost the illegal industry. Experts say attacks like the one on the Colonial Pipeline are becoming more frequent. In 2020, energy companies suffered the third largest number of cyber attacks of any industry, up from ninth place the previous year. 
but there's only a patchwork of cybersecurity regulations for energy companies. And the pipeline sector is largely unregulated. On May 10th, President Biden said that his administration was pursuing a global effort to protect American companies and infrastructure from ransomware attacks. It begins with a 100-day sprint to improve cybersecurity in the electric sector. And we'll follow that with similar initiatives in the natural gas pipelines, water, and other sectors. In addition to companies stepping up, we need to invest uh, to safeguard our critical infrastructure. The Colonial Pipeline started to resume operations on May 12th. But experts say the cyber attack should still serve as a wake-up call for the energy industry. 